Yeah. Some guy made it in his basement in like Virginia. <laughs> Dangerous. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and go through the very wet mud puppy. Oh, because it was dry. So it's, it. it's good to keep them moist. You did the right thing. <laughs> it's okay. No, I just uncovered it when I walked up here. All right, so here we can see its black little heart. Oh. I meant black as an evil. Now, we can see the ventricle very easily, and then, of course, flanking it will be the right and left atrium and then here the grayish tube coming out is the conus arteriosus but one thing you'll notice on this versus that of your shark is it's not a uniform width a little distance above it right about the tip of the atria we see it swell out and that bulb portion is bulbous arteriosus which is a more muscular structure that compensates for the shorter length of the conus arteriosus in amphibians and fishes as opposed to chondrichthys here, of course, we see the liver, very large organ, proving that Nectoris evolved in Ireland. We have this little gallbladder right here, which may or may not be green, depending on your animal. <clears throat> Over here, we have the esophagus going into the stomach, which, do you never open it up? No. There's something in there. There is. Or someone. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can see the stomach yeah. tapering down into the pyloric portion. Here, we can see the spleen, and back here, the teeny little lungs, much like a cigarette smoker's lungs, these aren't used for breathing. And you'll see, of course, typically two vessels on there. The red vessel will be the vein. Remember, everything's backwards when we get to the lungs. So pulmonary vein and the brown is the uninjected pulmonary artery. Okay, coming down here, we can see our stomach meeting the duodenum. And right near it, we'll have this little thing that looks like a wad of chewed up bubble gum, and that's their pancreas. Now we're in the duodenum, does not have a jejunum, ileum, and then we get down here. No, this animal's actually had poop in it, so it's even easier to see. But we're getting down to the ileum, and then once the color shifts on this guy, we're on the rectum. Or girl, sorry. You can tell a tiny colloquial gland, and oh, the eggs are a bit of a hint. <laughs> All right, now we can see here, this was a female mud puppy before Alexis killed it. And we can see nice large yolky eggs. She was probably going to mate soon. We also see smaller, immature eggs. And of course, that ties in what we've seen about so many vertebrates, where the female is born with the gonad, the uh, gametes, and they produce new gametes with, uh, cyclically, but they still have a reserve, as opposed to males, which pretty much start from scratch. Here is the oviduct. Anyone remember what this evolves from? Mesonephrine. Nope, that's the vasta friends. Fallopian that would be the kind of mistake you'd make. Oviduct and fallopian tube are the same thing. But good try. These evolve from Eulerian ducts. So that's the kind of thing you could expect to see on the lab exam or the lecture exam. Especially since I know people are going to make the mesonephric duct mistake. <laughs> All right. Now, with an animal like her, it's going to be hard to see the kidneys and all of that because the eggs are pretty much blocking the way. And frankly, if I'm going to tag the practical for kidneys, I'm going to focus on a male because the testes don't take up as much room. I should we keep the air conditioner on. <laughs> but we can come back here. Here it is. This blue and gray thing here, that's the kidney. Uh, the kidney is going to be very well vascularized, so there will be a lot of latex in there, so typically there will be a grayish color. And if you look closely on this female here, she got a, that's her urinary bladder, by the way, that's in the way. But there's a little pale gray ridge right along there, and that is her mesonephric duct. To carry the urine to the bladder and then out to the external environment. So let's take a look at what you're really worried about, the blood vessels. All right. And again, this is going to be hard to see with this female. In fact, I probably shouldn't have worked with this animal. In fact, I may have to do this a second time for you anyways because some of it is obscured. But for one thing, the oviducts here are kind of obscuring these vessels group right there. But here we can see the dorsal aorta, and you'll see a blue vessel on either side of it, which is the posterior cardinal vein. You'll see the same arrangement in the shark. Um, Coming up here, the first branch coming off the aorta 
is going to the stomach, so it's called gastric, which is kind of obvious. And our next branch coming off is going to be servicing the bulk of the digestive tract, and it's called celiacomesenteric. Um, basically, you could think of it as one vessel doing the job of both the celiac trunk and superior mesenteric in humans and cats. So our celiacomesenteric is going to branch, one branch going to the intestines, which will become one of the many mesenteric arteries we have. Most of the others come right off the dorsal aorta. And then the other branch going through the pancreas to the duodenum, so it's called pancreatico-duodenal. And then, of course, most of these names, scary as they are, are pretty straightforward because they're named for where they're going to. So here, for example, we can see the splenic artery going into the spleen although its attachment's broken off from where it came off of the pancreatic or duodenal. Um, let's see. Over here, of course, again, we got our mesenterics, and our mesenterics are going to have smaller branches coming off, which will be the intestinal arteries. Now, I look at the hepatic portal system in yellow here, we can see here is a vein that's servicing the spleen and the stomach, so that's the gastrosplenic vein, and of course, there's the gastric, I'm sorry, splenic and gastric branches. This one vein here is the mesenteric. There's only one mesenteric vein, but multiple intestinals. So that's one way it's a little different from what you see in the blood and the arteries. Over here, this is one of the things that's almost too easy. You almost wish it would be on the exam. Here we are on the underside of the liver. We see a yellow vessel and a red vessel. Yellow means hepatic portal, right? So yellow is the hepatic portal vein, and the red is the hepatic artery. And of course, coming into the liver from the caudal aspect, here is the post cava. Now coming down here, open up the pelvis a bit, and we can see there's our iliac artery. The vein's not showing, but it'll be running parallel to it. We can see a branch running around and up to the bladder. That's your hypogastric. And then another branch coming off the iliac, going into the leg, and it looks like this wasn't dissected. <laughs> because somebody doesn't love America. <laughs> now, if you just spread apart these thigh muscles, you'll see the femoral artery and vein going right through. Coming up here to show you the upper blood vessels. And again, may or, there, it was done, good. Good job. Here we can see the subclavian giving rise to this artery going through the armpit, again axillary. You can also see the uninjected vein right next to it and brachial plexus, kind of cool. And then you come out onto the arm and somewhere in here, protected. That was my intention. In the blood vessel relocation program will be our little brachial. There it is, right there between the muscles. Okay. Anything else? Did you see the radix there? Oh, the oral pharynx. You can't see me. No. <laughs> no. Okay. This could be opened up a little more to show things, but yeah, that's why you can't see anything. Um, do you have scissors nearby? Scalpel. We're killing Grayson's battery. It's okay. It's new. It can take it. You think by now you could handle it? <laughs> oh my gosh, you're poking the heart out. My heart was coming out. It's because he loves you. <laughs> she. Well, that makes it weird. It's kind of like E.T. I really thought the movie was over when E.T. died. E.T. didn't die. All right, here we go. <laughs> now, we actually have the vein showing right next to it, but here is the radix aorta, and then it comes up and curves into the gills, and that's when it becomes the efferent branchial. And out here is the external carotid, and down here it will be the internal carotid. And that's it. Cool. Does anyone want me to do the shark? Why not? Why not? That's right next door. That crappy thing? <laughs> <laughs> Are we stopping? Cut? Yeah, yeah I guess.